تعهدات آمریکا در حفاظت از مجاهدان اشرف میزه گرد فاکس نیوز 26 دسامبر 2011 Now these people are in a camp where they are defenseless and the United States troops have pulled out with the result that they are now at the at the mercy of the Iraqi government which is really doing the bidding of the Iranian government they have attacked them twice both times when the US the then US Secretary of Defense Bob Gates was in country That is former Attorney General Michael Mukasey talking about a group of Iranian dissidents who actually live in Iraq and they are moving elsewhere. Let's talk about it with our panel. We're back with Steve, A.B. and Charles. Uh, A.B., this Camp Ashraf situation is very delicate at this point. Uh, this is really uh, going to put us in a terrible position because we are going to get dragged into it. I mean, the U.S. government um, is trying to continue to partner with Iraq uh, to secure um, uh, uh, for their for their own security, but we're trying at the same time to stay out of the sectarian tension and political chaos that is mounting there. Um, you, we find the prime minister now; he wants these people out. They're going to be moved to a temporary place, Camp Liberty, which is a former U.S. base, and then. Uh, and this camp currently is sits 50 miles from the Iranian border inside Iraq. And as Jennifer Griffin did in her excellent reporting earlier tonight, talked about the fact that we have an understanding, the U.S. had an understanding with protection for these folks, Steve. Yeah, well, and this is one of the reasons that I think this is such a problem. Look, if we don't protect them, they could very well be the victim of collusion between these two governments. And the Pro Prime Minister al-Maliki said, you know, we don't want to hand them over to Iran. We're not going to kill them. We don't want to oppress or starve them. But their presence here is illegal and illegitimate. Well, what's happening, it's another event that we're seeing as a result of the full evacuation that Obama decided on against the generals who wanted a residual force in Iraq that would be a counterweight, essentially, to Iranian influence. This is entirely Iranian influence. The group that we are talking about are f fanatically anti the regime in Tehran. They are the ones who reveal the information about the secret enrichment in Natanz. The they have agents inside of Iran, and they are now defenseless. Uh, why we keep them on the terror list, I don't understand, but giving them written assurances of protection in return for them turning in their weaponry, of which they had a lot. So I think it's a matter of honor, it's a matter of strategic necessity. The least that we can do is to get them into these camps away from the border with Iran, where Iran actually is shelling them occasionally and to, to help them resettle. So we have to take them off the list. Uh, Steve, more uh, broadly, overall, the environment in Iraq, a lot of violence in the last few days. Yeah, look, Iraq is falling apart. There's no way to dress it up. That's what's happening. This is the, the logical consequence of three years of neglect. That's what happened with the Obama administration. Phone calls from Iraqi leaders went unreturned. Requests went unfulfilled. You had an administration, you had a president or a candidate, and then, president, and then Barack Obama, Senator Barack Obama, who ran against Iraq, wasn't interested, had called it the dumb war, and now you have a president in Barack Obama who neglected this war from the beginning. In three years, this administration had one task, work out an arrangement where at least America remains in a non-combat role as we were for the last year and a half to, to exert pressure and we did not do that. All right, panel. Thank you very much.